Welcome back to the Nastagram RPG Podcast. This is Empire's End. Hi, this is Dean. I'm playing Lieutenant Commander Victor Argus, Operations Officer or Ops. Hey, I'm John, and I play Lieutenant Commander Poro Randar, call sign Metalhead, Commander of the Air Group or CAG. Hey, everybody. I'm Matt. I play Gaius Loctus Vilfug, and I am the Medical and Personnel Officer or MED. Hey everyone, this is Dan. I play Lieutenant Junior Grade Nero Orn, Communications and Intelligence Officer, or COIN. And I'm Josh, and I'll be your Game Master. This is Episode 11, Parasites. Officer Log, Lieutenant Commander Randar, Acting XO, Reiko Station. First official business as XO was a long overdue meeting with Kuiper Corps. They came in swinging, claiming to have lost over two million credits worth of ore to the Black Jesters. But Victor sure knows how to make people feel on edge. They agreed to make a request for additional security personnel despite their initial complaints of lack of Imperial help. We also had them begin an investigation of Otto Calrun to see what ties he may have to the rebels we ambushed on planet. I also conducted an informal interrogation of one of the captured X-Wing pilots. Turns out during the Clone Wars, we were at the same battle and on the same side those many years ago. Strange how two men so similar have paths that can diverge so wildly. One on the path of order and the other on the path of chaos. Speaking of chaos, I need to find out more about the experiment Orn and the good doctor performed on the unconscious CO. Well, well. We're back, and uh, I think we left off on a little bit of a cliffhanger, as the kids call it these days. So uh, let's let's not fuck around. Let's get right back into it. Right back to Med Bay, right where we left off. Nero and Doctor Vilfug. Uh, hey, congratulations! You figured something out. <laughs> you figured out how to use this little device that Nero um, came up with, working on the CO. You you got some sort of when you're combining different broadcast spectrums and certain kind of crossover points, you got a reaction, you got a slow down. Um, we got two, we got a, a suppressed yep. uh, vitals and heightened. Vitals. And then shit went nuts. Um, BP heart rate, respiration, everything just shot up. And then even more shockingly, commander Hethna, Despite the condition and despite what you probably don't know, Nero, medically the induced, medically induced heavily, sedation, heavily, heavily sedated, heavily sedated, heavily. And um, we're right there. Your, your commanding officer, Lieutenant <clears throat> Commander Vilfug, uh, your commanding officer, uh, Norwin Hefna, grabs your arm. And looks up at you and says whatever the fuck I said last time. Says something like, Dr. Wilfog, what's, what's happening? On, off. Turn it off. Okay. I turn it off and switch it right round to the other frequency that I know depressed the vitals. Which one? What, do you turn it off or do you switch it? I switch it. Okay. Uh, give me a comms check. Okay. Uh, it's not as easy as turning a radio dial. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Cause I got to hit the frequency and, and the, like you're this very experimental. So tell me as what I'm, you got. So as I'm Don't, telling him no, to turn it off, what I'm, I see on that wild diver. No, it's a oh, two. Okay. It's a two back off DM physically trying to hold the commander down to the, like retighten the straps on him so that he okay. can't move. All right. He was probably kind of, you know, loosely strapped just, just as a patient security thing, not really restrained, just so that if the patient moves unconsciously or whatever, but he is straining at them and he's looking at you and he's talking to you. And he says, Dr. Wilfog, get me out of here. What, I, 
What's happening? Sir, relax. I get a 19. I'm going to use a character point. Okay. Uh, 24. 24. Okay. You, you're pushing him down. He's saying, oh, fuck, something's wrong. We need to get C- CIC. We need to... Uh, he slowly lies lies back and in a what you immediately think of as a probably not great for long-term health way his uh, entire biology is pretty quickly suppressed he drops his eyes slowly close and give me a medicine check matt as the this body goes from extreme spike to then Dan wow. to Nero wow. triggering wow. this suppression. Wow. wow. And you, at, at first wolf. you're just, you think that <laughs> I heard a wolf. <laughs> <laughs> I rolled I f- two ones, but also two sixes. Which, which one was on the wild die? I, the wild die is a four. Okay. So I'd say right. a total of, that's actually not bad. It's 18. 18. Okay. You you don't know that Nero changed the frequency. You told him to turn it off. He did something. Commander Hefna leaned back. And you kind of take a sigh as you see all these vitals drop. And then they keep dropping. And then... And... They flatline. Oh. What do you what do you do? I'm gonna hit uh an emergency uh in the med bay. Okay. Sort of whatever alarm that I have, and I'm immediately gonna start uh ACLS. Okay. Um you hit hit the button, Lieutenant Harper runs in. Wow. Um one wow. other wow. medic who's on wow. on site. Um Dan, what do you was Nero doing? Nero is kind of like calcul- looking at the situation and looking at like the stats drop off. <laughs> stats. Bad and, stats. Yeah. yeah. And uh, and he's watching Wilfug too. And then he flips the device off. So you take a while? You yeah. take your time with I take, it? I take, I, take, I take a beat, like just to, okay. uh, just to see it play out. And then I turn it off. Okay. They come running in, Matt. Uh, you're you're scrambling. I pull the the communication device like off the table by the side, and I back off and let watch everyone kind of work. Okay, um, Matt, give me a. I'm going to call this you know, medicine DC twenty five. Gross. Ooh. This isn't just a simple simple uh-huh. <laughs> cardiac rest. <laughs> um, something extreme just happened to this body. Um, it was un, not unnaturally, but from an outside source cranked the volume all the way to 11. And then somebody spun it back to one. Uh, where would you say the DC was 25 or 20, yep. 25. 25. All right. How many character points can I use? Um, for a skill check. I think it's like one. unlimited. I think it's unlimited three or maybe it's three. Uh, you might be right. I got Where's 19 the... to spend, baby. So we get into that 25. Come out of water. Don't forget, that's also your experience points. The Correct. only way any of your stats go up. I'm going to test my knowledge and say three and five on specialties, but I don't know. We'll go with that. Okay. Service. Yeah. 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 Well, I think Cap that's a good rule, three. anyways. Anything, uh, any special number on that wild die the first time around? Uh, just a three. <laughs> Any sauce on I'm, it? I'm really waiting. <laughs> I'm really waiting. I, got, I got some cooking to do over so here. <laughs> I'm at 21 with the first uh, character point. Okay. 22 with the second character point. All right. This is the last one. <laughs> this is the last one you can spend. I rolled a four. Three right. or higher. 26. Skating a on thin long ice, my, my friend. Time passes in... Moments like this, seconds become minutes, minutes become hours. And finally, boop, 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 you get the heart rate back. You take a deep breath. Tina Harper is leaning in with you. She looks up and she says, everything's coming back up, sir. I, he, uh, I thought he was gone. How did I, but... 
we've done well everyone you've you've done amazing this is thank you as I look around at the team and do that uh, leadership thing where I, I look everybody in the eyes the nod <laughs> yeah I kind of take a, a page out of Argus's book as I as I address everybody in the room you've saved the commander's life and I'm sure he will appreciate it once we're able to figure out what is wrong with him. But, oh, I can handle it from here. Thank you. I'll sort of gesture everybody out. Okay. As everyone kind of files out, your attention probably comes back to Nero kind of standing up against the wall with the device in his hands, and he's just watching you. Um, Lieutenant Harper looks at you kind of pauses on, on the way out, um, Matt, and she says, um, do you, do you have any hope that we're on the right track with him, sir? With the CO? Absolutely, Miss Harper. I believe everything that I'm doing is for the best for the commander and the station. Let's... Uh, hold on just a second. Uh, yeah, go ahead. Make... But you are a lucky man. A deception check. I just uh, checked the rules. Uh, you're lucky you skated under this. So the limits to character points and how they can be spent. Two to improve a skill or attribute roll. Ooh. Yeah. Two to Oops. increase the damage on an, uh, an attack. This often counts as an evil action. Five to improve a specialization roll. Five on any use of dodge, melee parry, or brawling parry. And then five to increase a strength roll to resist damage. All right. Well, wow. you're saved by I'm not retconning that. Yeah. <laughs> Hence, even forth. medicine to not for, first. I wonder if first aid has its own. Uh, I didn't say anything no. for uh, first aid. That it, sounds about right then. Yeah. Huh. That that is. Uh, well, hot damn! They have the rules change in the game. Makes sense. So, um, yeah. So in the future, two max. But I I said three. That was what it was. But yeah, give me a um, give me a con roll, Matt, to what you're telling Lieutenant Harper. You're good, trusty. Can I make a con check too? Can I make a check on his? Can I check his check? Oh yeah, yeah. Make a um. Uh, I got something. Check, check, check all night with this. I feel like we had a really hard time <laughs> uh, finding yeah. the Didn't skill we? for deception or or, or no, uh, like perception. it was perception, right. like a. Something that would qualify as like I reading think, someone. I think investigation. It's, I think sure. that's it's not what we great, ended up with. But let's yeah. stick okay. with it. Let me just look it up. I rolled a 12. Part of me wonders if con would be a good counterpoint to con, because if you're a con artist, you can kind of see the grift. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Is it a perception skill? But it's not always for lying. Oh, is it not? Like reading con somebody. Con is a perception skill. Yeah. No, okay. Oh, it is. They're, and so is investigation. Yeah. Mm. So, yeah. Fair. Um, there's almost no difference for me rolling wise, anyways. So, I mean, almost no is not the same as no. Oh God, what a tech joking. fucking nerd! <laughs> <laughs> Actually, technically, technically, George and Wunsch, they matter. Also, by the way, I'm a GM now. Stop fucking calling me a DM. <laughs> you All see right. this hat? Yeah, <laughs> I'm I thought, the Star Wars. Universe. I thought when we get on the planet, we're going into a this dungeon. Is an admiral. <laughs> <laughs> I think your prisoners are going into a dungeon. Yeah, well. I got a one on my. Uh, my con, so I I move hook dungeon. line and sinker. Um, fourteen. All right, with a one. Yep. All right. Um, you don't see anything out of the sure. ordinary, and you don't read anything out of the ordinary mm-hmm. on her. Matt Vilfug has gotten to know Harper pretty well, and there's something when you say that. There's something in her eyes. She kind of she starts to look away and and like glances back for one second. And makes eye contact with you and says, oh, of course, sir. And kind of takes a look at the CO as she walks out. Time for her six sick little choline stew. <laughs> <laughs> Kidding. Um, and the two of you are alone. Nero raises an eyebrow at you. Good work, doctor. Did you record the data? Of course. I'll just say, Is right, it? right now you don't know this, but... When you go back over it, Matt, you will realize that Nero had triggered the other um, signal, which caused some effect. 
and you will be very confident that is what caused his condition and very, very near death. Had I known the rules better, the <laughs> CO would be dead. <laughs> uh, well, he, um, Nero says, is that a, is that something? Before you the- say more, back to the other room. He'll glance over because we're now sort of by the exit of the med bay. Um, I assume you uh, shut that door. Are you still in the room of the CO? If you yeah, want. We, uh, that's what I'm saying. We'd go back to. Okay. Okay. Yep. Um, I uh, I say, is it is it within the realm of possibility for a patient to awake from a coma like that, Doctor? There have been cases, yes. Although the outside stimuli that we pres- provided perhaps had an exaggerated effect. Also with this creature... Once I'm able to go over the data with the frequency numbers you've recorded, I'll I'll know more. But as it stands now, it's more questions than answers. What purpose do you suppose it performs, hypothetically speaking? Hypothetically? I believe it suppresses the commander's neurological and physiological functions. What that means, I'm not sure. Or heightens them in the case of the higher frequency. Hmm. I don't know if that was With some study and and passage of time, um, Matt, I'm going to have you make another roll or two where you might, uh, and I'll give you more info based on um, kind of researching back into this with, with all the extra data that you have now in observation. So, don't feel you need to come to too many conclusions yet. What? Um, you guys wrap up in there for the time being and um, stepping out into Med Bay proper and uh, a couple steps in the door in front of you. Oh, well, good afternoon. I was actually just coming by to check how the seal was doing. I- See, there was some kind of alarm. Lieutenant Thorne is standing in the uh, center of Medbay. I believe he's in good hands with the doctor, Nero says as he walks by Thorne. He looks down at what you're carrying. Mm -hmm. I just keep walking. Okay. Can I help you, Thorne? Perhaps refill a prescription for... I'll look look down on him. Space hemorrhoids. (laughs) (laughs) He, he takes a couple steps um, kind of up, up to your shoulder. Um, he's looking in at the CO through the, you know, the glass observation window, space glass, transparent glass. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And um, he says, no, um, no change in his uh, condition, is there? Small. There was a disruption in bodily functions. We almost lost him, but... Oh, oh my. myself and our team were able to stabilize him and bring him back. Yes, we're lucky to have you. Um, also, uh, sir, and if I haven't said it before, of course, congratulations on a well-earned promotion. Thank you. I also, in, as you're probably aware, in the course of an investigation that continues over the events of, of which you played quite the heroic part, of course, here in, in Med Bay. And, um, well, I guess I hadn't, of course, I've read the reports, but um, hadn't been by properly. He looks around the Med Bay, sees some of the damage is still enduring, unfortunately. It is. It's, well, I dare say rather disappointing that this is the first time you've come to see the damage that has been wrought upon this station. I thought someone in your position of Comforce would have been up to date on all the comings and goings, especially damage reports and rebel incursions on the station. Well, sir, it is one thing to read. It is a different thing to see. And as Comforce is only representative in the Virac system, 
Sometimes the threat of future damage must be a higher priority. Hmm. But I meant to ask you a question that wasn't really in the reports. You were here, you saw everything firsthand, of course, reacted so heroically. What do you feel the motivations or targets of these rebels were? What were they here to do? His eyes look over the CO's office into like the different holding areas. He says, what were they going for, do you think? Well, it would make sense that they would try to cripple the station. No. Kill the commander. You feel they were going more after the commander than the prisoner who was held here at the same time? Well, I don't know if you've ever been in a situation such as that where your life was on the line and split-second decisions needed to be made, but truly, I wasn't quite focused on (laughs) everything going on around me. I simply knew that I had to get that grenade out of the room if I was to save anyone's life. Of course, of course. Well, I wish you best of luck with the CEO's health, sir. I'm sure it's important to us all that he is able to resume his duties here soon. Agreed. Thank you. Thorn uh, takes a step back, clicks his heels, salutes sharply, and he walks out. Matt, take a uh, point for air of superiority. <laughs> uh, and Dan, from that last oh, interaction... Son of a bitch. Do a uh, ideal point. Point for your ideal. The rules are made to be broken. Cool. Um, also, don't forget, guys, about your special abilities. Literally um, just remembered that. I was like, wait, <laughs> I think I was supposed to roll an extra die for yeah. all of mine. So I will... Uh, I save mine for... Because sure. it's it's pretty swingy. It's potent. Yeah. It's swingy. Um, John, next time yours comes up, I, I am going to nerf that a tiny bit. Okay. Still the same general idea, just make it it's a little uh it's a little Uber bench right now. Okay. Um Do you want to be specific to like one person or something? Um so what I was thinking, so yours is you can take an action and to do something that exposes you to danger, all yeah. and if you succeed, all your allies get an extra action in that round without a cost in yep. any conflict scene. So um you don't get the two extra dice and if you succeed one ally for every five you beat it by another ally, uh, an additional ally, if that makes sense. Okay. All right. Um, all right. Uh, where to next? Dane's shaking his head at me. <laughs> Disapprovingly. Argus is going to go see Cass. <clears throat> okay. I just go down to see him. All right. I never make him come to me. All right. He is... Uh, Probably running. before Yus goes to see him. Sure. That's my plan. Okay. Uh, he's working on a operations and training schedule. Me, 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 me. He looks up, kind of starts to stand up from his desk. Sir, I got my hand up. Gas. I walk in. He leans back, scratching his head a little bit. Just uh, trying to figure out a way to get it all done, sir. I apologize in advance for this. Use has been reassigned for one week. He closes his eyes for just half a second. <laughs> Understood, sir? Can I ask where to? Of course. May I? I point to the chair. Please. I sit. We met with Marita Falcone. Have you ever met her? Kuiper. Um, seen her in passing. Haven't talked to her. Well, let's just say that we've been able to ascertain information about her that she doesn't know that we know. Thanks to Lieutenant Orn. We know that her higher-ups have told her, cooperate. We are still the status quo. In the interest of maintaining the status quo, and in the interest of Otto Karun's ability to be recruited by rebel operatives, I offered Eust's presence over there for a week to acclimate them to proper wartime security. Well, he's the right guy to do it, so... We're going to get something in return. We're going to get craft, we're going to get defense craft, and two teams. Corporate security? Corporate security, private security. They could be good, I'm not sure. Here's what I do know. They're going to be yours to be used however you wish. However, 
you wish? I guess that's one of the more of the week uh, use time. I'm not sure if I can make that evaluation, but I was thinking on my feet. I say so. You uh, didn't have to come all the way down here to tell me that, sir, but I appreciate it. Well, that's all for now. Have I been made aware of this bug? I was, right? I was yeah, you were. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. Because I got a little lost there for a minute. We we met in the hall. Yeah, yeah, I got it. <laughs> Dan loves hallways. Nero fucking loves hallways. He loves a good hallway. <laughs> the most secure place on the ship. Mm-hmm. From an intelligence point, nobody, <laughs> nobody has a fucking meeting in the hallway. All right. I say, we've recently discovered a listening device in the med bay. Imperial class. No way to requisition that equipment out here. Somebody arrived with it. Do you understand? There's a couple obvious possibilities. Indeed. I'm hoping it doesn't come to it, but if necessary, we may need to take a traitor into custody. Do you understand? I understand. Tell your man to be on high alert. I narrow my eyes and look at him. <laughs> <laughs> like a good guy. Okay. <laughs> All right. Um... Matt, do you want to uh, wait till you have a little bit more info to go to the CO with this? Uh, yeah, I'd probably send like a little communique explaining what the emergency was in Medbay because I'm sure it would probably get back to okay. him uh, the- and explain that it was a, it was part of an experiment with Nero, uh, but that I was going to be getting back in touch with him with more details as soon as I had time to go over the data. Quick, down, and dirty. All right. Um, so, right now... I give uh, Cass an as you are. I leave. Okay. So, I am... Uh, I'm going to say that we... This was the end of our second uh, chapter, second sure. part of this arc. I kind of thought of that first one as getting the CO getting back to the ship. Um, this second part was everything from there, dealing with the threats on the station in the system, the rebels, the Kaliri, the black jesters, um, the immediate fallout of that. And uh, that gets us to this point. There's going to be a passage of time as you guys follow through on some actions you're already planning on taking. Um, I'm going to say, I'll figure out how much time it is based on everything you do, but everybody all four of you get 15 character points. Woo. All right. This will be your only opportunity until we get to another one of these points to spend any of them. So spend a little bit of time thinking about that. Are there any maximum raises? I can't remember. Only one pip per skill, per rest period. In other words, I can only raise something one pip. Uh, yes. Okay. Are they, specializations, I'm going to say you can add a die. Okay. Um, everything else is can come up one pip. Perfect. Thank you. Um, do we remember the cost on those? Yeah. No. Um, uh, anything before a die, the number before the die is the cost and character points per pip. Okay. Got it. In other words, if you have five, five dice of bureaucracy, a five, one is five, a five, two is 10, a six is 15. The third pip is the die. So if you, Yep. But you can't do that anyway, so it's irrelevant. So it's the cost of- Specializations are half. Are half. Round up or down, I don't recall. Um, Probably up. Every RPG is up. Up. Yeah. Uh, attributes are- ten, ten. 10 times. Which you can raise a pip if we want. Yep. So if you had something that was 2D plus two, you can raise that to 3D for 20 character points. And everything um, else goes up? Everything else goes up one pip. So good. if I wanted to raise my perception, which is 3D, I'd have to spend 30 character points to raise all of them in perception? Correct. Per- your perception base skill would go up to 3D plus one. Every skill and specialty under it would go up one pip. <laughs> Who has 30? I got 32. Nice. Yeah, 33. Nice. What do you have? 27. All right, cool. Um, so you've seen the character points can be obviously extremely useful. Yeah, no shit. Um, God, I wish I'd known that and killed the fucking CL, but go stick by what you say. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, that would have been bad for me. It would have been cool if we knew, too, the weight of those. Have it, you only needed, would you need six? Yeah, I rolled a two yeah. and then a one. Yeah. Nice. I have 27 as well. All right. But, you know, there are only so many you can spend. And, uh, yeah, anything that you don't 
go up here. We'll be uh, taking a little bit of time. So uh, some other stuff that, and tell me if, if you feel that these are scenes that you want to role play out some or all of, um, because we certainly can. Um, but we talked about doing the interrogations um, of basically, I just want to know how, how much you laying down the hammer on these pilots and on the clear you have captive, um, depending on how you're going about it. I may or may not have you make a roll. You'll get some info no matter what. And obviously just curious exactly what you're getting into. Got it. Once um, Dean, I'd like to know what you're kind of sending back in general for the sit rep. Yeah. I forgot about that. Yep. Um, Matt, I'm going to have you make some rolls and get some info on the brain slug. Dan, I'm going to have you make a roll for the repair of the communications Mm -hmm. of the system Mm -hmm. or of your, um, not system of our what is this thing? station for a rego. Yeah. Yep. The one I fried. What's the, what's the thing you're on station. That's it. Um, and what else? Anything else? I'm uh, I'm a missing. I don't think so. The only thing that we haven't done yet is Dean hasn't interrogated the Clary or the pilots. Right. I didn't yep. know if you wanted to actually run it. We can. I mean, up to Dean or just kind of say how you want to go about the interrogation and we can kind of cut to the chase and maybe show that. Mm-hmm. I, I, Last part of it. I'm almost thinking on a meta perspective, do we want to run another interrogation scene for audio? Yeah, drama probably, not, no. yeah. probably not. Right. So I'm going to utilize the droids in the way they're utilized. However, whatever that means from a, a Imperial law enforcement standpoint, however, we typically would run an interrogation. However, those drugs are to be frank, I would have will fug probably handle that part. I he probably understands what, they can put into these guys to like some kind of sodium pentothal to get them to talk. Um, I'm not really interested in beating them up. It's not going to get us anywhere. Okay. Argus knows that about interrogation. He, right. I mean, mm-hmm. my interrogation is five plus two. Okay. And so he knows enough to know what he can ask and what's going to resolve results and not. And the, but there may be some softening from the droid in the chemicals. Yeah. Yep. Just to see if, and uh, essentially we're just trying to understand I think what we all are trying to figure out is uh, potentially the size and disposition of this force, a potential location of this force, if anywhere. Um, Within and, the VRX system. And, yes, and any yep. names. We need names so we can fucking give those names to the uh, NCC or, or, to, or to Stromwell down on the surface or to whoever, law mm-hmm. enforcement down there, so they know what the hell's going on. Um, that first scene with, uh, what the hell's her name? Um Raul and Marita. Marita, yeah. Uh he pulled up all that information of Otto Karun on that data pad. Uh, yes. I guess I or Will oh, yeah. had and, and he sorry, he's gonna get up there too. Go ahead, Will Fug. Yeah, had the idea to like I don't know, maybe since Kuiper is doing all the hiring on all these worlds, maybe they have a better idea of how many people are on these planets. And where their hiring pools are coming from. And if we could get Raul to point us in a direction to get information on that might be something worthwhile to, just to get his figures for the planet. Okay. Interesting. So kind of dig in through that. Yeah, I through like my that. liaison personnel, admin, get, get to see if I can get people looking into that. Cool. Yeah, and I think one thing... Victor would probably want to communicate to the crew, which is something I was trying to express in the email that we were sharing uh, between sessions. And this could either be role played or just said straight up, but I want to make sure that we don't spread ourselves too thin because we're not equipped for large scale planetary operations, like uprooting a rebel fucking Alliance force. Mm-hmm. We, we, that's way beyond our right. ambit. We, we, we can liaise like he's like the doctor suggesting we can, we can give, we can share information with Stromwell. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think it's probably up to Stromwell to make inroads with NCC if he wants to and law enforcement down there. Because at the end of the day, in going back and listening to the first episode, because I had to do the thing for it, I realized that (laughs) this might be better in character. Maybe we can just do a scene, but the, at the end of the day, the NCC have no protection from indiscriminate destruction from the sky. If you catch my (laughs) (laughs) So if they get cute, Mm-hmm. We'll fucking destroy them from space. 
Do you understand? Like, I'm not saying like go full evil, but we have yeah, the right. ability to do what we did with him. Mm-hmm. He probably won't. He'll resign. But um, <laughs> or but I'm you. just saying, if the rebels are down there and we locate them or whatever, or if NCC's like fuck you, we're rebels now. We go cool. We can we can destroy them. Like they, they I think Joshua, they have like they have atmospheric craft only, if I'm not mistaken, right? Yeah, they have it's zero space presence. Yep. Which gives us a decided advantage with just one TIE fighter, which is crazy to think about, but it's true. So that's our strength. Our strength isn't like, hey, let's infiltrate them on the planet right. and spend all our resources and send cast down there while rebels are blowing up our med bay. Mm-hmm. So that's, I just want to make sure we maintain our focus and, and re remember what our mission is out here and how dangerous it is. And now with Kuiper's interests at heart, mm-hmm. we probably want to focus on protecting Kuiper. And let NCC and Stromwell, who we will liaise with, figure out what the fuck's going on on the ground. Because their army, we're Navy. Fuck us. If they need a, if they need bombing support, fine. But no, yeah. like it, it makes sense. Just and right. The thing to remember, though, on the other hand, is that the only reason the station is here is because of that planet number one. Correct. The Kuiper assets are important, sure, and are a big part of it. But they wouldn't be here either if there wasn't this. Right. Following this of, of course. And so, she reached out to us, right? But it doesn't mm-hmm. mean that, you know. Mm-hmm. Right. right. Which is, hey, we're here. Great. Our army's down there. Help help them find the rebels and they'll get rid of them. It's like insurgents. Get help. We're there. Sure. Help us get rid of them. Um, and we'll give you whatever air support you need. But All to right. send like an entire team like Cass on some kind of fucking bootstrap mission, it's just like, no, I need them up here, you know? Yep. What's the, um? sorry, what's the the character point usage for upping a specialty half half okay do you know the normal score if i don't give you the rest of the equation yes. <laughs> okay i'm just making sure all right and there was talk of uh probably taking a planetary trip down um i gave you forewarning that at some point the governor was gonna get wise to what's going on and probably be reaching out to you of course um and also an opportunity for cast to you guys talked about how to kind of deal with his idea of interacting with the NCC. And I think you had setting up that network, right? The thought of him doing it kind of on the side. Yes. Mid to low level guy to mid to low level guy, instead of going right up to the top or, or whatever. The guy he has a relationship with. Right. Utilize the relationships. Right. Okay. Um, John, anything on your end? Um, I mean, the only thing that Randar really was, you know, had, uh, hand in would be setting up some sort of trap for the pirates um, but I don't know how much that is in the priority right now So it'll be in the pipeline as we get probably cozier with Kuiper and they start to bring resources to us because to, to, yeah. we need to like good faith we have to actually support their problem mm-hmm. um, yeah absolutely so, and, and as, as XO you can just start and execute an initiative. And if I have a problem with it, I'll tell you, but otherwise you're free to act. So if you think you want to do something like that, if you think absolutely, you want to assassinate Argus. I mean, like you just, <laughs> you just put that in motion, buddy. Yeah. <laughs> just, just come on down in. to the good doctor. Just sit on the, yeah, just set. <laughs> he's, he's well you know, experienced. Promotion, you know, <laughs> just send that envelope. And then another thing is Argus's uh, stewing, deep blood red rage over <laughs> Thorn, and he is vindictive. <laughs> that is one of his flaws. <laughs> He's blood red mad. Uh, <laughs> Dean, just a but cool, a cool mad. Just a little tidbit. Yes, please. Don't forget that he's made a request for a bunch of Compnor to come to us. Yes. So if he's out in did airlock, we, did we intercept that signal? <laughs> <laughs> no, nope. Damn. If I were instructed to monitor signals coming from, can I ask you a board? meta question while I while I have sure. you? Um, bureaucracy for Imperial Military Five dice. I don't know if this would suffice. It's a specialty, but um, does Compnor have the authority to place bugs without my commands on my station? Like, do I have a leg to stand on if I was to confront him about this? If I think it's him, which I obviously do, he just shows up in med bay right after that shit. Both of you. Which I don't know yet. I'm assuming right. they'll tell me. Yep. Um, yeah, I probably would have had that in that report. 
that wasn't you're pretty sure from the bug because it wasn't broadcasting. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's just a recording device. Mm-hmm. But it could have been indicative of attention being paid to MedBay. Right, for investigatory mm-hmm. purposes. And, I mean, there was an alarm that was sounded. Like, it goes off in there, but I'm sure there's some indication that an alarm was sounded in MedBay. I'm sure. So, um, what the fuck were we talking about? Uh, whether the, he'd have a leg to stand on. Oh, in okay. Yeah. The, I think the way I, I'm picturing it is you both would. I see. That that somebody in comp force can say, well, comp force, you know, ex- exists outside of the normal Imperial military chain of command. And part of the reason they're there is to, you know, blah, 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 blah. And hearts and minds. You could say, well, it's my station. It's so it's not clear cut either way. Really? Got it. it it's very <laughs> reasonable that you would be annoyed. But it, reasonable. <laughs> but, <laughs> that'd be a frozen popsicle in space. <laughs> but it's his reaction would be very understandable too. Of course. Mm-hmm. Um, so after I see Cass, I'm going to go see Thorn. Dan, anything else? <laughs> really? Um, Probably. Let me just do a quick check. Although probably before I see Thorn, I should probably consult with these guys because if there was an indication that there was an emergency in medical... I would just say, is everything under control? They'd say yes. When we had a, yeah. You let's, know. For, for the sake of, you know, time and huddle ups, let's do passive time, give you guys some roles, give you some more information. Sounds good. And then maybe kick. Yeah. The, chat. the only two things that one's back burnered, which is the black jesters angle, which we'll get mm-hmm. to, I think later. Yep. And then the other thing is, um, I was planning uh, and this is kind of the ongoing communications that we'll probably set up with the NCC is I was going to redeploy the probe droids in a specific area, um, likely areas closest to nuclear, uh, to know more about the population that we've recently got it. Yep. When you go to do that, mm-hmm. the probe droids, uh, have been pulled off planet and are being, uh, refitted in station. Under orders of operations, Lieutenant Seslin. Lieutenant Seslin. Mm-hmm. Okay. Do you recall that? Uh, they were initially transferred to operations. Right. As part of this conduct. Satellite imagery for the planet below. Yep. Which has been being done. Yep. Um, it's just intelligence for Stromwell. In, our, in us. Mm-hmm. <laughs> right. Um, oh, that was a, the... So they did that kind of census sort of thing. Right. Yeah. And then a lot of it was just, let's get a picture of this planet as much as we can, because we have a lot of blind spots. Okay. All right. Um, so they've been, I'm sorry. But I don't want to, again, that's after this email exchange regarding, let's let's reconsider how we're spreading ourselves out. So. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. So where, where are we at here? They've been um, pulled back. Uh, they've been, let's say they're still deployed on planet, but they, they were retasked as Dean just described. Okay. I, okay. Without consulting you, however, technically they're not your asset right now. Sure. Okay. I, if now, if I may, I thought Seslin went to you and said, Hey, these are being taken from you. Commander's orders. Uh, initially when they there, there was a the scene, planet. there was a yeah. scene. Y- yeah. You played out the, um, bringing the data back in the meeting. That's right. So, yep. But that was just for effect. Yep. All right. Um, Matt, give yeah. me a alien species check. Dan, give me a comms check. Dean, give me a, you can roll the intimidation check. Or interrogation. Uh, interrogation? I have it. What did I say? Intimidation. Okay. Are they different? Or subset? Uh, in- interrogation is a specialty of intimidation, apparently. Okay. Um, roll that, uh, plus one D. Okay. Um, roll it twice. Very well. First one's on the X-Wing pilot, second on the Kaleri. This is the interrogation roll? Yep. So speckled hen is wild, and you're giving me an extra dice? Oh, yep. for drugs. Nice, nice sound. Uh, 17 for alien species. Okay. Um, I'm going to cut my fucking brain slug and stuff. All right, guys. So, uh, or what did you get, Dan? Uh, 22. 22. All right. So let me deal with 
uh, Matt first. So here's what you figure out um, between your monitoring, looking back over the records, um, and some developments uh, that continue to occur. You believe this slug is a natural organism and it has a natural lifespan. There's different phases. The infestation phase adds uh, or leads to some sort of temporary uh, incapacitation of the host. Once the organism is normally or is fully situated in, in its adult phase, uh, it seems to be normal functioning. Uh, it draws nutrients and energy um, from the physical and the electrical energy of the host. Through probably some kind of coincidence, are you drawing a massive dick <laughs> on your notes? <laughs> Is this John's like-, like sketching some awesome TIE fighter and Dean just, just can't contain himself. <laughs> Okay. Um, it's beautiful. <laughs> you think it's it's just some sort of evolutionary coincidence that it reacts this way. And what it's doing is it is having a physical reaction. And because of the way it interacts with the brain, it causes the host to have a physical reaction. Um, there's probably more than the two signals you found. Um, you believe if depending on the strength of the signal that if the host was conscious, normally a strong enough, really heavy hit might incapacitate a milder hint hit would be able to heavily push someone in a certain mood or emotion to make agitated, anxious, fearful, relaxed, depressed, this is what they're deploying down in Cuba on our CIA agents. Yeah. Uh, and you, you suspect that this organism doesn't have that much longer in its life cycle. And you're not sure about the next phase of what an organism tends to do, which is reproduce. Dope. So that's what you know. You, you, don't, you don't know. You think there's a possibility that the CO there could be some long-term or even potentially permanent uh, health effects from what happened. And you definitely discover going back over the data that their reaction was caused by Nero flipping to that second signal. Dan, your comms roll? Uh, 22. You fix the comms. Boo. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, it's a shorter one. Yeah. And uh, the other uh, thing that um, just on your radar at some point is setting up a meet and greet with Tochichi. Tochichi. Yes. Um, I think they were having security band camp for a week. Got it. First. <laughs> yep. So he's going to spend some time cool. with Yust. Yep. Um, <laughs> Dean, what did you get for your interrogations? First one was 20. Second one was 19. Okay, um, 20 on... Number one. I don't know who that was. Does anyone remember what I said first? No. For what? Flip a X-wing. coin. X-wings. X-wings. Okay. Um, you, here's what you learned from the, the rebels. That the they have a new asset scum. named Randar? They, <laughs> um, they didn't know anything of any rebel presence in this system. Okay. Um, Which means they jumped in. They were in the middle of... This was a, they were conducting this mission over four systems. This was their third. The initial two were successful. They did not. What was the fourth? You don't have to tell me, but so we know the fourth or no? Uh, yeah. Okay. Sure. You can get it from cool. them. Um, the mission was to get the broadcast out successfully. Um, you, they would have tried to, they probably would have bugged out if they thought that it was going to go the way it did. Um, they probably didn't realize how long they're being jammed in the speed of the interception and not being able to get out after that. The blazing, amazing, tactics. blazing, amazing glory of, of metalheads crew. Um, wait a minute. <laughs> and, <laughs> uh, 
you you know you learn a little bit about their squadron. They give up some in- info, um, a little bit of info about some of their strength. You know, there there's not a very strong rebel presence in this sector, but you know, not insignificant, especially sure. if massed. You know, you don't have ship counts and everything like that. But that's the sense. They probably don't know all the ship counts. Um, and the sector admiral is a, is Cathar is his race, and he is called Admiral Purrington. Is he a cat? Yes. <laughs> is he a cat? He Pur- has arrived. He's Purrington. He's an interdimensional. <laughs> he's cross. He's a Cathar. Cross. Which may look like a feline humanoid <laughs> species. Interdimensional cross genre. <laughs> Do this this fitness mm-hmm. report is perfect. <laughs> um, oh, sexy cat, man. And so that's that's about it. Basically, I mean, you learn some more specifics that aren't relevant to VRX system. If you want to forward them up the chain of command. I absolutely will. Okay. All that information is going to go in the sit rep. Um, while we're talking about it, the sit rep will also include that the CO fell ill from some sort of local parasite. And Dr. Wolfug is uh, doing his best to heroically understand what's going on and prevent infection from happening. Um, Otherwise, we've had a couple of dust-ups, which are completely under control. And uh, we've reestablished negotiations with Kuiper, and they're going to get us information because we are unable to get it from Sector Command. Okay. Equipment. Um, And uh, we're coordinating efforts with Stromwell to ensure planet security. If necessary, you know, things might... Take a turn, right? Just always, <laughs> and and I'll and I'll talk about the promotions that were necessary over the course of duty and what happened, and I'll put all the injuries in there. But I'd I'd rather you know I'd rather downplay the infiltration of the fucking med bay. Sure, no and, deaths uh, yet. No deaths yet, which is pretty n- not bad. It's pretty disappointing for me. Well, Endor keep, wish Endor wishes they could say the same. Maybe I should have been commanding. I keep also. asking. I keep or expecting Josh to be like, okay, make a con check. Whenever Dean explains with a straight face <laughs> the situation of the the XO. Everything's fine here. And then, the CO. And, then and then yeah. lastly, I will tell them that um um I will I will tell them that uh that the the Compnor agent uh, seems to be uh, performing his duties perfectly. Okay. <laughs> All right. Um, and because <laughs> I'm assuming someone in Compnor is going to read this report. For the Kaleri, he is very res- resistant. Okay. But you get some information. He, you get his name, you get some other names that he knows, but you That's going get to- the. Kuiper? He is part of a, they call themselves the Free Kaleri Front. And hmm. they don't call themselves or consider themselves rebels per se. Just freedom fighters on the surface. Um, they are against Imperial and Kuiper presence in the system. And uh, it's a huge breakthrough. You learn a couple more things. They view the Kaleri government elites, as well as the NCC as collaborators. Uh, he doesn't know a lot about their overall strength disposition, whatever they are somewhat compartmentalized on purpose. Cells. Uh, yep. Um, he knows that the woman known as Sela, mm-hmm. um, arrived a couple weeks prior um, she and Auto Calvary? Nope. What's Titus? In my dreams. Oh, the captain of that. Yep. Um, Clock. Grin Genin Genin Alcon. Alcon. Sela and Genin Alcon. Um, man and woman arrived. He doesn't know a lot about them personally, but that they showed up. They, um have been offering assistance in their fight, helping to bring in a lot more arms and equipment, some heavy stuff. And, uh, he didn't interact too much directly with them beyond that. He's very, very low level, but that's, that's a lot. What you find out. That's all going on the report to see rep going up. I'm fine with that. Okay. Um, I will voice some concerns about Titus Redmere in my report. 
Okay. Which goes through military chain of command. Um, Otto Kelrune, I don't think this is one we have to role play. It kind of got built up over time. Mm-hmm. <laughs> almost to the point where I wanted to make this guy some kind of grand level thing. Mm-hmm. He's a douchebag. Mm-hmm. He's a patsy. He's yep. a patsy. That's, yep. that's right. Um, what you get out of him, he completely breaks hard <laughs> and fast. <laughs> he breaks it before that. Oh, droid. she transported him to us. They caught yes. him. Mm-hmm. Didn't oh, catch he, him. Cause he's done. He doesn't realize he's a dumb. He dumb. has no, yeah, he's, he's a, a real, he's, dumb a, dumb. he's a patsy. Um, yep. Perfect target. He thought he's in big trouble. He doesn't even require the drugs you're telling me. He thought she was a scout consultant for a different shipping firm. Yeah, he was a target because of his infidelity. And uh, basically was kind of doing a little, giving her some, helping her with some leads, Mm. basically. So he's guilty by Kuiper standards. Right. Well, yeah, he's fired. Um, mm-hmm. More than he is guilty by like imperial citizens. Sure. Standards. Yeah, we right. turn him right back over. Okay. As I anticipated, that was his case. That Sorry, was his this is disappointing. <laughs> <the saga. laughs> no, no, I, no. I, think, I think we started to come to that conclusion. Yeah. We were like, he's either in on it or he's just grossly incompetent. Like, you guys mm-hmm. like keep coming up and like, but haven't like talked to anybody about getting him. And I'm like, should I make this guy like some fucking mastermind now? Because like, <laughs> otherwise, he's born, born clearly identity. eluded. <laughs> We bring him in. He's like, you wait 207. You're out of hand on yourself. Thinking, <laughs> I was thinking when, uh, when you, like they had the actual interaction with Kuiper about going and getting him and you're like, yeah, good luck. We'll never find him. I was thinking about Indiana in Jones where like, he's talking about, putting, he'll blend in, disappear. He speaks a dozen languages. Um, fuck yeah. So about 10 days goes by. I give all that information up to sit rep and I flavor it to my liking. Okay. Um, 10 days or so has gone by. I'm going to say that just kind of off screen, this information was passed around. Makes sense. Um, Let's not go over it all again. Let's, let's go over it. Let's actually, Should we have let's, a meeting for every one of these? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, was there any, anything else, uh, scene wise that needed to be discussed. I don't think so. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, other than um, Josh, I am probably doing an active search of the station now for recording devices, recording devices. Okay. Um, uh, it's been how many days? 10, 10. So one thing we might remember based off of an old recording, cause I do listen to these cause there's a lot I gave, I told I told Thorne I was giving him three days. Mm-hmm. Yes, and then he was going to go down to the planet to pursue leads there. Uh, he said a week. I said three. He said okay. Although he begrudgingly said okay. Yep. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm just uh, c- kind of thinking that some things took longer. If you wanted to boot him after three days, um, I didn't. I just wanted him to move quicker. Yep. Um, and boot him right down. But kind of some of the things that were going to spur the action into going down to the planet. I'm fine with you don't get around till 10 days. Sure. Um, maintenance wise, the phalanx two is operational. Great. So for the first time in the actual campaign, you guys have two customs Corvettes, which is going to raise questions about their disposition, about the possibility of having one out on patrol in the system. Um, yeah, we're going to have to, fi- we're going to have to look at the, what we have from, from asset standpoint and, and, and give some support potential support. I'm going to share the intelligence about the Alliance, the information I got relative to all of this stuff. I'm going to get to Strom as well. Okay. I want him to have it. The a, a initial survey was completed by the probe droids. Okay. Seslin is requesting that they be reassigned to the Vad Bell and outer rim. Granted. Okay. Cause she's going to look for black gestures. Yes. Which mm-hmm. might help us spot rebels too. But one thing I want to try to make clear is we have to, if she's going to direct assets out to space, um, I do want to try to protect Kuiper. And um, and I do want some kind of, can, can we overlap our efforts in space to also pot, spot potential rebel approaches? Because would they probably take the same lanes as pirates, so to speak? Okay. John, the tie compliment, even though it's not your baby, completely anymore, but under your purview, um, is 
as good as it's going to get without higher level repairs. Yep. You have four TIE interceptors, eight TIE fighters that are operational. Okay. And um, that's about that. Do we have enough pilots for the uh, for the craft? Or did at one point did we have too much craft or too much pilots? You have more pilots than craft than craft. Okay. That's why some of the pilots were helping with security That's watch right. duties I things like that. that thank you for the reminder um so that's kind of where we're at do mm-hmm. you kuiper assets have they arrived within 10 days uh they have not but okay. you're told they're in route your response to the sit rep you know thanks for the information mm-hmm. um some follow-up like specific kind of questions and you are told uh due to strategic constraints resupply estimated 30 days along with the resupply Lieutenant Commander Selim Ostash will be inbound as the slated XO replacement. That was already planned. Remember at the very I start do. of the game, the XO left. Mm-hmm. You, Argus, or as your friends call you, Vargas, <laughs> were just initially the acting XO. Right. I remember that. So I'm currently the XO. So I'm assuming he'll take over as CO. If everything remained the same, if this guy showed up, he would become the acting CO. You would become the acting XO. Got it. Okay. John could go back to the cockpit. Cool. Uh, so that's where we're at. Um, that would be fine. Target that supply ship in fire. <laughs> uh, yeah. And Matt, Gaius gets a very urgent and very flustered call from Governor Redmare. Excellent. Um, <laughs> he is... Uh, Cannot get it up. He is quite incensed. Um, very agitated as he asks if you know of the news of the death of Emperor Palpatine. We don't have to role play it out. <laughs> I, I'll, I'll say it happened off screen, but basically he just got the word and he confirmed it with the moth hmm. who great. Apparently there was some sort of miscommunication and the communication must've been scrambled by the rebels. Initially I wasn't informed. Um, and, uh, he wants to have a immediate security uh, and strategy planning session and wants you to come down with the CO. Okay. I'll, uh, I'll be comforting, polite, you know, uh, empathetic, if you will, towards, <laughs> towards him. Uh, and then hang up and I'll take it to Argus. But... Mostly, mostly downplay it as uh, as whining, but we should attempt to appease him. Of course. And Dan, sorry, give me a mm. uh, another security role. Mm. And John, the stuff with the gestures, ambush kind of stuff. Nothing you're actively working on now. Um, I guess uh, with the phalanx tubing up. I may um may use this position as a as like a um this is where we are so go where we're not type thing um and start to plan a action talk to Ral get information about his cargo ships when uh and then potentially put out that information about one being full you know start that that planning got it yeah okay so start to to put the package together and yeah. and try to find the right window to execute it. Right. All right. If you have a, uh, you know, maybe in between sessions at some point, if you kind of have a, a vision of what it could look like, yeah. you know, see how we can work it in. Yep. Uh, what'd you get there, Dan? 25. Aren't you precious? Mm-hmm. Boy, um, boy. Okay. Uh, with a 25, you find four additional recording devices one in engineering one in so the first one is med bay engineering the there are two in i'm sorry one in the civilian transit sector one two two in that general area the civilian transient area people come in and out of stay at the stuff that really the Imperials don't do anything more than maybe you have security patrols go through there now. Mm -hmm. And one. Don't you fucking do it. In your room. (laughs) So that one picked up a lot of baloney slapping, right? (laughs) Tons. (laughs) Just heavy 
heavy fapping. <laughs> Why is he always crying when he does it? <laughs> You're like, is he hurting himself? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I should have him come report to medical. Uh, <laughs> is his father there? This daddy or? <laughs> um, all right. So, so that's where we're at. We're probably getting close to the end here. Mm-hmm. So do you guys want to meet up? Discuss next step forward. I'm assuming I'll I'll hear something from Orn regarding these findings. Mm-hmm. Let's uh, f- maybe try to get everybody on the same page. Yeah, I think what Orn would probably like to do. I mean, if you, if some of the information you wanted to pass separately, that's fine. But for the sake of <clears throat> discussing next steps, yep, I was thinking that he would <laughs> first. Tell Roy, huh. he would show Roy, and then tell Roy that he he has to give a report to the XO, and then he would go to Randar and tell him his findings and say we should probably, if you want me, to, I can take this to right Argus. Okay, all right. That sounds like a scene that could be good. You go in a scene. Yeah. Him. Yep. And or Roy too. <laughs> <laughs> um <clears throat> all right. Yeah, why don't you um why don't you bring it to Roy? Are you in engineering? <laughs> he bashes your head in with a fucking <laughs> wrench. He's the guy. <laughs> I um <laughs> I go to probably his office. Okay. Where um, where was is it where is it located? Um, in the lower decks of the Avius, okay. um, he, uh, his desk is pretty messy. It's mm-hmm. like data pads everywhere. A lot of paper. Um, there's, there's parts that are sitting around like mm-hmm. in various pieces of assembly or disassembly. He's got a lot of like whiteboards or whatever they call them in space with just kind of different shit scribbled on them. Yep. And, um, he's, he's standing up. And he's working on something on a data pad and he's got a, a huge sandwich. There's a cup of coffee in front of him. And uh he's uh he's actually in there with give me that shit. Uh it's he and um Tenet Chan, his uh his second are both in there. I'm sorry. When I sent my sit rep to Sector Command, I CC'd Thorn on it. You CC'd Thorn? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because I thought, remember I said how good he's of a job he was doing. <laughs> yeah, I do. Okay, he's gonna know anyway. <laughs> I don't think there's anything in here, right? That he wouldn't know. I mean, um, I mean, maybe some of the interrogation stuff, and I, I just, I, I mean, I, and yeah, no, I don't think there's anything there. I'm too, too worried about. Okay, unless he's compromised. Um, unless he's compromised. <laughs> Roll an investigation check. Mm. Uh, um, all right, so it's it's Roy and his um his second lieutenant Sean, who's the uh, the Duros. Right. Oh. Um, um. And it's Lieutenant Commander Roy, right? Uh, just Lieutenant. Oh, full, it's just full Lieutenant. <clears throat> I kind of clear my throat at the door. And I don't know. I just don't figure. <sighs> oh, you're uh. Look a little clean to be down these decks. We need Nero. I'd like to speak to you alone, sir. All right, John. Well, take this down. Get a start on it. We got to pull that thing apart anyway. And uh, see if you can put a team together. Duros nods and leaves. I, like, as the Duros, like, leaves, like, through the doorway, I step, like, into his office. He sits down at the desk, keeps eating the sandwich. As we discussed, I would bring anything from engineering that posed a security threat to you first. I am honoring that agreement. He stops chewing for a second. I appreciate you honoring the agreement to follow the goddamn chain of command. What do you, what do you got? What, something broken? I put down the my data pad that shows the picture of the uh, recording device. That device there was located in the lower decks of engineering. Yeah, all right. So you still think this uh this mole is digging around? 
I actually have thoughts this could be related to something else. But I don't want to speculate. So you think this doesn't have anything to do with security breach that you're telling me we got down here? Unfortunately, no. <laughs> what? All right. Well, that's good. I didn't want you to be surprised. And any of this information come along with uh, suggestions on what to do about it? Reported to our XO. I mean, at some point, what are we doing about, you suspect that there's somebody down here. I mean, I know these people. I talk to them. So if there is, you've gotten by me. We're working towards it, sir. Working towards it. All right. All right. And this is something else. This is something else. Great. Appreciate the information. Thank you for upholding. Of course, sir. I guess that's all. That's all. <laughs> He's a big fucking aggressive <laughs> bite of the sandwich. Nero turns <laughs> and walks out. <laughs> Nero's secretly satisfied that he honored their agreement with something pretty much fucking useless. useless. Yeah. Um, and I head to Randar's. Okay. Bleep, bloop, 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 bloop. Your door. <laughs> no, 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 no. You're dumb. Every door has its own personality. It's like a hellscape. (laughs) Are we on the fucking event horizon? (laughs) Oh shit! Uh, Come in. Oh, Nero. Uh, What's your What's your new? I have the same rank. You have the same rank. Yeah, Commander. Commander Randar. I have searched the station to the best of my ability. Oh, that thing you found. You already you probably already told me about. I did. Yeah. Remember I sent you that nasty oh, yeah. gram? Yeah. Um, oh, yes. Uh, the listening device. I have a better understanding of who's placing them and why. Let's hear it. I found one in Midbay. I found one in Engineering. I found two in the civilian transit area, and I found one in my quarters. Hmm. Someone doesn't trust you? Shocked. Commodore is, I believe, taking a special interest in my past resume. Hmm. So, Thorn. Nero kind of gives a slight shrug. It would seem that all the information is pointing to him, yes. That Weasley little... Well, what do we do about it? Well, we must bring it to Vargas, and he may know. To who? <laughs> Vargas. <laughs> you mean Argus? Uh, you fucking must... call your CO by his first name, punk <laughs> bitch. You... Oh, it's no, something... Argus is your last name, right? Yeah. yeah. You, it's something that does that is annoying about Orn is that he, he often got, drops the titles yeah. of people. Um, if it doesn't bother anybody, it would be Randar because pilots are, yeah, always, sure, always yeah. Doing yeah. Shit. uh, he says we must bring it to Argus. He may know of these devices, he may have even tasked Thorn with it. If he hasn't, though, he should know. You should know, but it's Comforce. They have certain jurisdictions, you know. They do, as do I. Well, yes. Let's bring this to Victor. He gets up, like, closes his data pad. How are you finding the new position? Uh, a lot of paperwork. Nero kind of... Hey, John. And smiles. It fucking sucks. <laughs> <laughs> I have a feeling that Victor gave me this just so people would stop coming to him. Wise man. Yes. Well, uh, we head up to CAC in Victor's office. Okay. Um, as if by GM magic, <laughs> Dr. Vilfug is also making his way Perfect. to see. Commander Argus. We all stand like awkwardly at his door. What sound does your door make? 
Bing bong. All right. When you open the door, you hear John Carpenter music playing. <laughs> um, you're in the CO's office outside the CIC, adjacent to that little uh, kind of conference ready room thing that you guys have gone in before. And uh, I'm just reading over some readiness reports. In walks uh, Dr. Vilfog, Orn, and Randar. Victor. To what do I owe this pleasure? Uh, Thorn, apparently. Thorn. Uh, Is he Piers. okay? <laughs> <laughs> I think he's doing just well. Uh-huh. It appears he is um, taking a interest in some of uh, the comings and goings and engineering, medical bay, Nero's room. His investigation? You know of it, sir. I know that he's investigating something, as Compnor oft does. Well, these locations, in addition to medical, the engineering department, I've let Lieutenant Roy know. Two in the civilian transit area. And Wait, I'm sorry. I don't track. Recording devices, sir. Imperial recording devices, like the one we found in medical. Argus stands up, puts his hands behind his back, and walks around the room. There was another in my quarters, sir. In your quarters. Which makes the intent a little clearer. Interesting. Lieutenant Thorne. So he suspects you? Nero nods. That doesn't surprise me. Civilian transit makes sense as well, doesn't it? Agreed. He's not sure about Wilfog. But why is he not sure about Roy? I think it more has to do with the type of... <clears throat> crewman that Roy has in engineering. Specifically, sir, his findings did point him in the right direction. They were compatible with the findings I had, that there was someone with significant technical aptitude within engineering that delivered the message for them to attack the medical bay. Mm-hmm. So I believe his investigative will led him in the right direction. I tend to agree. Lieutenant Thorne is troubling, but he can't be shut out without drawing suspicion to all of us, especially as he is going to be in communication with Compnor. We have to assist the man in any way we can. We have nothing to hide here. Your nods slowly. That said, I don't like him putting bugs in crew members' quarters. But he does have certain liberties here, doesn't he? The good news is, I'm not sure how much longer he will be here. He'll be going down to the planet below to assist Stromwell in planetary side operations. There are many hearts and minds to be won on the planet's surface. <laughs> Lucky for Stromwell. That said, one of my problems with a man is this axe he seems to have to grind with certain crew members. I just want us to, I would like Thorne to engage in objective truth instead of subjective prejudice, which he seems to have for certain people. I'm not sure you can rid the man of that idea. <laughs> I sure can't. To be fair, recording devices do provide objective truth, Victor. Indeed. As far as I know, Comforce is within their right to tap communications. I believe that is true as well. Sir, before he goes planet side, would I have permission to return all the devices to him? I say, let us not engage in any type of emotional frivolity. <laughs> Nero shrugs. That said, he's going to want to collect them sooner or later. If you happen to be present when he does, that's your prerogative. Understood, sir. Well, I appreciate you taking this to my attention. How is Wilfug taking? Oh, I turn and look over at him. <laughs> he, he was probably fixing himself a drink. <laughs> where, where exactly in Medbay was this place? Uh, it was where the CO was originally held. Uh-huh. Well, next order of business, I suppose. Any word from Kuiper? I look to the XO. 
they say uh, their assets are en route. Uh, I'm not sure I got an ETA. I can check for you. Let's make sure they are not Remember waylaid. That be more. Oh, well, you can <laughs> check. <laughs> Let's make sure they're not waylaid by our friends. Certainly. Mad. Well, we have the, uh, the Phoenix 2 or Phalanx 2. Phalanx 2. Phalanx 2 is operational now. And uh, actually, I was going to bring this up to you. We should probably get one of them, one of the Corvettes out on patrol on a regular basis. I agree. We need a faster response time to uh, avoid 2.3 million credit <laughs> fuel wastes. Certainly. As soon as I can liaison with Tolchichi, I can make sure that the schedule mm. caters to our military strengths. Mm, indeed. Uh, see if they'd be willing to share information, sensor information, perhaps even communication logs. Use your discretion. I'll have Bandit set up an escort mission for that ship when it comes in. Indeed. Let's make an impression on our newfound allies and our relationship with Marita. All right. So sounds like the early makings of a possible counter ambush, the Black Jesters, if you yep. get the... Um, the operation side and the and the counter intel side to line up. Matt, do you want to bring up uh, your buddy's phone call? <laughs> right. Oh yeah. <laughs> hmm. Anything else, gentlemen? Yes, the governor called Titus. Yes, he found out about the emperor's demise along with what happened on Endor. Is he beside himself with grief? Any any good member of the Empire would be. No? I look around the room. <laughs> <laughs> Nero's looking He's... down at the ground. <laughs> Thorn's hiding behind a plant. <laughs> looking at us. Ah, gotcha. ah, you didn't make sad enough like fucking Kim Jong-il. <laughs> <laughs> He's requested a meeting planet side with you to go huh. over his security protocols. I see. Very well. I'll reach out to the governor. No problem, sir. Thank you. And sidebar, has it been made public that I was going to be quite forthcoming with why we're keeping the XO the way we are? The CO? Yeah, I'm sorry. The CO. Has it been made public? Yeah. Uh, I didn't know if that was an off-camera type of thing. You could have handled it off-camera or you could, or I could do it right now. tell him right now. Yeah. I say Randar. Yeah. With Wilford's expert medical advice and my full concurrence because we are not aware of the nature of this parasite attached to the commanding officer we have placed him in a medically induced coma where he's being monitored quite carefully i understand there was a moment down there in the med bay where he regained consciousness but was acting erratic and they had to resubdue him i'm hoping that no infections occurred but we're keeping him subdued or sedated under the doctor's care 24-7 and hope to not risk the crew's health. It's, Certainly. It's possible we could make him wake back up and he could exist as normal, but he has a parasite on his brain that's clearly affecting his physiology and potentially his psychology, and it's a concern of mine. We've been pretty quiet about this so far until the doctor cemented his findings, and I want to communicate it to you and I'd like you to get it to the department heads. All right. Do you so, have any idea of the dangers of this parasite yet? I turn and look to the doctor. A few. The main danger would be what's to come in the future. And that I still don't have any information on. This is seems to be a uh, indigenous species. It Seems to be, well, mostly benign, but in its current stage, it seems to be ending its life cycle. And, well, as all things do, they do enjoy to reproduce. No? Kind of smile and wink at the boys. <laughs> yeah, like fucking. <laughs> now... What that means for this, I am don't know. What that means for the safety of us here on the station is 
an even larger question. So, isolation and heavy sedation for now. Doctor? Yes? Do you believe the species was indigenous to Virex 2? Because there was a question, a question we had that this may fit nicely in. The escape pod that had some sort of containment on it, something that could fit a parasite like this that was dropped near to the rebel base. It may have been that this was brought in. I've considered it. I'm sure Commander Argus has as well. I mean, on that planet, Selvar essentially gave him to us. Maybe protecting her, li- her own life, difficult to say. Perhaps any intelligence she thought she could get out of the CO, she already did, which as we know is not much. That said, perhaps she can reach out to whatever their most prestigious hospital is down on the planet's surface and see if they've encountered this parasite before. An avenue perhaps we should have explored earlier. I can try. Uh, if it's indigenous, they'll know about it. Certainly, sir. I'm curious as to what your findings will bring you. The, the, you know what's the most imperial shit about this podcast? 11 episodes in, nobody's tried to talk to a Kaleri except <laughs> in <laughs> once. Mm-hmm. Nobody has touched any non-human in this fucking <laughs> system. They're disgusting. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to be talking to him with tie bombers. <laughs> Yikes. <laughs> That'll make him listen. All right. So uh, what do you guys think going forward? This, Do you want to handle the thing with the governor as a call? Or do you want to make this trip that you kind of... We should because we have other things to do too. We've got a bunch of... Like a, a cast yeah. thing. We yeah. can make it all in one trip. Okay. It would be probably a good... Perfect like, cool time for episode. Reiko to be taken over. Yep. Perfect. All yep. right. So... Let's uh, think about who's going to go, what the objectives of your little away team mission are. Mm -hmm. And uh, hear what Titus has to say, number one. That's right. And uh, we'll fucking kick off in the Lambda next week. Definitely going to lurk on Thorn or Thorn taking, uh, (laughs) recovering some of his devices. All right. Thank you guys for listening to another episode of Nastagram. We hope you're enjoying Empire's End. You know the deal. We're going to ask you to spread the word, tell a friend, post about it online, do whatever you can, ratings, review, everything helps. And get involved. Got a great community over at Facebook at the Nastagram RPG Lounge, or just pop over onto the website, nastagrampod.com, links to all our socials, and bonus content and more coming soon. Our intro music, as always, is by a Wilhelm Scream, Scores this arc are from both Adrian Von Ziegler and Anti Mark Kynan. We'll be back with another episode next week. Why don't you bring a friend? Mmm, that's nasty. All right. So yeah. Probably like I guess we're not using this. I have, I have uh, something. I got something. That oh, was such a good burn. <laughs> fuck me, right? Hey, fuck, fuck my me. time. Yeah, fuck right? this podcast. You can you can fix it all on the editing on the back end, right? You got that? You cranky? You see yeah. the hiss behind his voice? It's just all the way up. Air forty seven. It's like fucking hissing. All that electricity. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>